Thank you very much. Can you sum up the week just in terms of what you guys have been doing and what the, where the emphasis has been? It's been a pretty intense week. Um, any weeks where it's a bit longer of a build up, you get an extra couple of training sessions in. So um, we've sort of had like a, we had a contact day um, and then a sort of a more uh, running day. We covered um, sort of team patterns and stuff like that. So. Um, I haven't seen too many of the boys today, that means they're either asleep or pretty sore, so it's uh, it's been a pretty thorough build-up. And Mike Cron obviously has been key to that, has he? Yeah, well Mike uh, Crono runs you know, the forward side of it, so we've had our uh, yeah, contact day, we covered um, just our usual routine really of um, our scrums and uh, and our line-up work, more the physical stuff, you know, mauling, defending mauling, and then um, the other day we were just running through our, our lineouts uh, that we'll use for Argentina. I wonder if you came through that uh, Argentinian test in Christchurch. You know that game pretty well by now? Yeah, uh, came through well. What did it tell you? Just what we knew that you know, they come for scrum. Um, they like to play from anywhere and uh, yeah, pretty physical. Being the fact that you've signed for London, you know you're going to be playing here long term. Is that does that change your perspective? We've been looking around the place and he's thinking that this is going to be your future home. Yeah, I've uh, this week. Yeah, I've definitely got out a bit. Um, had a look through the Tower of London and um, spent spent most of today at Hampton Court. So um, so my family's already here. We're we're only five minutes from here. This is the area I'll be in. Um, so the family's at the moment getting settled. Um, in terms of what I'm doing in here now, it's, um, if anything, there's more of a focus on what I'm doing now because this is sort of, you know, my days are, are, are numbered. I know when the, the end's coming, so um, just trying to do, um, just give it everything I've got for this, uh, you know, last time. <coughs> Would you think about living at the Tower of London? <laughs> Well, I definitely showed my daughter the dungeon rooms and uh, tried to scare her a bit, but it didn't, didn't seem to work. She was uh, too fascinated by the blood, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely had some upsides. The thick doors would help. <laughs> Been a bit of time doing promotional stuff and before you got into training, you've had quite a bit of building. Um, after these trainings you've had, did, did, is there a sense of the pressure, not pressure, but is there a sense of the tournament sort of starting to build within the team, you guys starting to look a bit more serious around the hotel, that sort of stuff? Um, it's been a big lead in, because um, we had the time in Auckland, um, so I just felt after we, uh, you know, leaving New Zealand, everyone was just anxious to get on the plane to get here to sort of get the feel of the World Cup, and then having those two promotional days, of, you sort of got to feel people were just ready to, you know, get onto the training um, paddock, and um, you know, our first day there was a lot of energy, so uh, I haven't really felt any nervousness or any sort of energy like that, but I can definitely tell uh, the boys are excited just by the way um, we've trained um, early this week. Ben, it's all of uh, scrimmaging, purely scrimmaging. Which uh, team tastes more spicy, the Springboks or the Argentinians, according to you? Oh, well, it's a tough one, really, because both of them really pride themselves. Both of the teams really pride themselves on their physicality. Um, Argent, well, both of them have a, you know, a lot of pride in the scrum. Um, so do we. Um, but Argentina's sort of got that reputation that, you know, you, you ask anyone about Argentina, they're going to talk about their scrum first. Um, you know, Africa's got quite a few, uh, you know, quite a few things come to mind, but. Um, but in saying that of Argentina of late since they've been in the championship, you know, um, our side of the scrummaging, their defence is, um, you know, I'd say that's one of the best in the world, the way they defend, um, their energy and their line speed and, and also the way they attack. They'll really, uh, they'll really uh, you know, test you from anywhere. You know, you've seen um, the African or the Australian games, they, they had a crack right off their own line. So there's not many teams in the world that'll do that. So, um, so they're definitely... Um, got a lot more uh, variation to the game. The day after, is it more painful after the spring box or after the Argentina, after the scrum? Oh, that's just pain's pain, so <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all painful. Uh, for a front rower, you know, there's never, I can't ever think of an easier day, it doesn't matter who the opposition is, because it's, you know, it's, it's physicality. And, um, 
it's a technique, it's it's a mentality, not so much, you know, a refined skill. So, um, you know, a lot of things, um, you know, catch pass, it sort of starts from a five year old, you know, you can you either got it or you don't, but physicality, you know, anyone can have that. And so you, that's where you see like some of the um, smaller nations can really compete with the bigger nations. And, and so right across the board, that's just, they're, they're all tough. As Latin players, do the Argentine, Argentine try to provoke you, stare you in the eyes and, and talk to you and to get the emotion out of you? Um, well, not the times I've played them, but uh, um, they're definitely uh, passionate people. And uh, <laughs> you see that come out in um, the way they play and um, you know the way they scrum. Yeah. Just physically, how long does it take to recover you know, if you face a tough opponent like the Springboks or... The um, yeah, yeah, so we play a team like the Argentina or um, Africa, it's probably, you know, you have, you have a good three or four days of, of soreness. Um, some games, um, depending on how the opposition want to play, like in Australia, who play quite quick, um, you might not be quite as physically sore, but you'll definitely be quite tired for the same duration so uh, it just depends on how the game goes you know if it's in the wet or you know the conditions aren't that flash you, you know you're going to get beat up a bit more so yeah, the muscles will be sore but dry conditions chucking the ball around you're going to be more uh, you know just tired and um, mentally fatigued. Just Argentina also they, have the, they like to keep the ball in the scrum a bit longer um, they, they seem to pushing more intensely for a longer period. Do your sort of legs tend to jelly a bit when that sort of thing happens? Is, it, is, it, is that more intense actually during that engagement? Oh yeah, now with the new rules, um, that's changed. Well, so we've had them for a few years now, but um, <coughs> the competition's longer, you know, we used to have the, the hit, it was all about winning the hit and then the, the scrum was over. Now uh, that's taken away, so that that, uh, that load is, is a lot longer, I think. I can't remember the exact stats, but I think the last World Cup it might have been around three seconds, and I think the average scrum now is up around six, so it's doubled in length, so um, it does make it a lot harder. And to spend it, depending on what your team's tactics are at the scrum, some teams will uh, try to strike the ball quick, get it to the eight, and then push, and then some teams will leave the ball in the middle and then try to push over it, so, um, and, uh, you know, Argentina usually sit the ball there and and back themselves to push over the ball. And you were just talking before, Ben, saying that you know your days have seemed to be numbered with the All Blacks because you're moving on. But do you think about that much? That now you're in camp, sort of think I want to make the most of this every day, and just you know it's coming and coming to an end. So, um, not so much. I've tried because I've always been covering two positions. I've always tried to, and so the opportunities um, sort of can be at least at times. So try to make the most of the trainings. That's usually trainings is usually where. I, um, can sort of show my wear a lot more. Um, <coughs> if anything, now I just think um, now you know when the end's coming, you sort of you can uh, really enjoy it more and sort of take everything in and really appreciate uh, you know um, you know being an All Blacks. So. And it could be the end of an era. Your younger brother and you will no longer be playing alongside each other. Yeah. So you know it's gone. Uh, so you know, so quick. So it's something uh, both definitely enjoyed um, the rugby side of it. Um, I've got no doubt we're definitely going to be uh, training partners for the rest of our lives. But <laughs> mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the rugby side is uh, you know a bit sad in a way that uh, for the end. But um, I still hope that uh, you know who knows um, we've still got a bit of years left in us. We might get a chance to play um, the same team again. You look pretty emotional about it, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> Sum it up pretty well. <laughs> Just reflecting. Guys, you were, you're talking about the, the, the length of the ball staying, staying in the scrum from, from three to the six. Have you guys had to adjust? I know you, you're both pretty diligent when it comes to your, to your gym work and your weight stuff and your technique. Have you guys had to change your weight routines or, or do different exercises in the gym to be able to give you that, that core strength to be able to stay in the fight for long? So the way we've trained I think served us well for for that anyway. We've always kept it pretty basic and just try to do the basic things in the gym really well and not, not try to overcomplicate things too much. But where does your guys' diligence 
come from? I mean, is, is there a parent or is there a person? Because you guys both seem to be so focused about you know your, your gym technique, what you put in your body, all that sort of thing. Where does your, your the, the diligence and the work ethic come from? Oh, probably for me, uh, similar Ben. Probably not a necessity. You know, um, when you have to work work extremely hard for everything you have, you know, you, you know, you got to put in a bit more than other people because maybe naturally you don't quite have, you know, the same as what they do. So I guess when you have that mindset that we develops work ethic and, you know, Dad um, had us training from a pretty young age as well and always taught us that, you know, what basically what you put in is what you get out and you've always got to do a bit more and, and think outside the square to, to get ahead. Can I ask what sort of, did you guys do like, when you're eating your food, did you guys have like kilojoule counts and stuff like that you had for meat on the day? Um, I know, I know now, but um, you know, when we first started out, sort of 14, 15, not, not really, it was just more about eating uh, <laughs> lots, like well, I wouldn't say it was out of necessity really, well, I wouldn't say we're both naturally um, big guys, like we see our dad, like he's probably what, 85 kgs? Um, so um, most of our family's quite small. Like they all rode motorbikes and stuff like that. You know, we were never going to be able to do that. But um, so, so yeah, that just come like when we moved to Christchurch, sort of seeing, oh, you know, you can actually do this as a, you know, you can actually play rugby as a profession. Not there's more to life than you know being a fisherman. Um, and then yeah, we just went from there. Dad um, encouraged us about training, and then you start training, and then you start to think about what you eat, and we just. Just been, I don't know, it was fate. We just seemed to meet the right people. We met Warren Thin, who was a, you just won't know him, but he was a bodybuilder in Christchurch, and he took us under his wings and he taught us um, nutrition, taught us about turning up on time, he taught us about um, you know work ethic in the gym, and then we sort of enjoyed that. And then, and then we met other people, um, you know, Scotty Hansen, who's been big. Um, he's over here coaching now, but um, you know, he was. On to us, you know, we didn't always have the natural skills, but it, we knew how to work hard. And, um, you know, just Ed Cosner, who we met, um, he helps us with our training now. Um, just by chance, he was at the Crusaders in 2006. So it's just a funny way things have panned out, and they've all sort of helped mould the way we sort of do things. As uh, siblings growing up, were you good mates, or did you have uh, the odd sibling Barney as well, fights and all the rest of it? Uh, no, we got on pretty well. I think younger it was always. Uh, I think Ben would try to bait me into fighting him because <laughs> I was so much weaker and smaller. But um, as I got older, I could start to compete a little bit more. Um, the only fist fights we've had, funny enough, is on the training field. Uh, had the Crusaders a couple of times, but um, yeah, I don't think we ever hold a grudge. We're probably laughing about it now later. So. <laughs> Who won? Well, we both. <laughs> We're both pretty crap at fighting, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if we touch each other. <laughs> yeah, we got over it quick because we uh, we trained and then we were playing the um, Blues that night, so uh, the next day. So we're on a plane and we're sitting together and then we're in the same hotel room. So uh, you know, <laughs> you have to move on pretty quick. I mean, would you, um, you know, without getting too emotional, corny about it, but will you miss him when he's uh, not in the All Blacks uh, um, setup? Oh, definitely, you know, like I said, training partners and uh, hang out a lot, so, yeah, I guess I'll, um, might be sitting around the dinner table a few times by myself, but that's all good. <laughs> Which one of the two brothers is the less uh, stressed uh, two, two days before starting this work? I well, know, we're both pretty, um, off the field, we're both pretty laid back behind the scenes, um, <laughs> so I don't know if you'll see too much, but... Uh, we're usually pretty well prepared, um, so I suppose that sort of helps, you know, being a bit relaxed, but uh, yeah, I suppose you'll see on Sunday. Ben, you told about all those years scrimmaging, uh, once again about the, the day after, is this something very common for you? anybody that you can't do, like scratch your hair or walk or something you're not able to do because of the pain? Or because Yeah, um, sometimes driving. <laughs> <laughs> what? Turning the neck, oh yeah, you can't really uh, turn, uh, reversing, uh, parking. <laughs> uh, 
getting off the couch out of that. <laughs> it, it, it depends what you feel like doing on the day, looking after my daughter sometimes. Um, nah, you just generally stiff, so it's just, um, you try to move around as much as you can to sort of get the body going, but you know, some days it's harder than others. So. There was a report about the last World Cup, uh, the final, that you did the gym session the very next day. Is that fact or fiction? were pretty early risers and I was wasn't up to much so I thought I might as well go down and yeah, lift as well. So and that was the day after the final? Yeah, well <laughs> I guess gym to some people was a chore but, you know, we've been doing it for so long it's kind of a, a bit of an outlet for us as well, you know, you can kind of feel at home in the gym, so <laughs> yeah, that's not a big deal. You know, some people like to read a book or, you know, go for a walk or something. It's sort of both just like, you know, it's just nice to get into the gym, uh, especially when no one's there and just sort of, sort of that way of de-stressing, I suppose. Um, 